took the at villager and then there's just a safe yeah so there's it's the mayor and the two villagers that need uh ex adventuring but let me take a breath here before i jump into the next one because i can feel myself getting lightheaded already okay and another victim this work certainly is trying I figured a book like you would be into all this word stuff, Vice. Even I have my exceptions. Now let's be off. And here's the last one. A colony of massive sculptures was visible in the distance, their tall forms scraping against the sky. Vice and Nier had never seen such a sight, and their eyes widened as they tried to take it in. Those buildings must be huge if we can see them from this far away. What do you think, Vice? As Vice considered his answer, the sun beat down on them with renewed ferocity. Perhaps they are some manner of mirage, he said. Under this heat, a mirage or two would hardly be an unexpected sight. Nier nodded and wiped the sweat off his brow, leaving a trail of sand in its place. He thought he'd never been so thirsty. The ancient road on which they walked was black and cracked with age. Here and there, thin wisps of grass pushed up through the rocky surface, as if to find those who had laid this material down over their home. The heat reflecting from the road made Nier lightheaded. His feet hurting, he crouched down to rest. I don't know how much longer I can do this. Is someone playing a joke on us, or what? The complaining had already begun. Vice tried not to let his, rolls eyes to let his eyes roll too much. A joke, he said. No, no joke. This road leads to the city of art. Perhaps the path itself is simply some manner of grand artistic work. You don't sound very sure of yourself there. Perhaps not, but thinking of it in this way might make it easier for you to bear. Nier glanced at Vice's grinning face, shook his head, and resumed walking. As time passed, Nier's feet grew more painful, and his throat drier than he thought possible. He tried not to look further than the next step ahead, because the bright sunlight made him hesitate to trust his own senses. We are definitely getting closer, said Vice in an effort to cheer his companion. Yes, this much is certain. Encouraged, Nier lifted his gaze. Suddenly, he stopped walking, choosing instead to stand in the middle of the road with his mouth and eyes wide open and his finger pointing in the distance. Water, he cried. It's water. Water, asked Vice. Preposterous. I don't see any water. Over there, just look, just ahead of us. Look, the sun is reflecting off of it. Without waiting for a response, Nier sprang to life and bounded toward the site. What in the- There was no water. There was nothing but sand in every direction. Nier closed his eyes and sighed as Vice floated up behind him and chuckled softly. I believe this is known as a mirage, he said. Many a desert traveler has spoken of such things. Nier shook his head, bewildered. Suddenly, he pointed off in the distance, his eyes wide once more. Wait, there it is! I just missed it! Look, it's right there! Nier sprinted off again, leaving Vice with no choice but to follow. After a few minutes of running, Nier came to a halt. He would have sworn it was right around here. Confused, he put his hands up to his eyes and rubbed them vigorously. As soon as he stopped, he noticed a blue, shimmering pool of clear water just over the next rise. With a shout, he bounded off in search of it. The chase continued for nearly an hour, until an exasperated Vice finally floated up to Nier and struck him in the face with his cover. Enough, you blithering idiot! Stop this at once. There is no water here. Nier's face clouded. There isn't? There is not. And perhaps next time you will listen to me when I tell you as much. Vice paused for a moment and continued speaking in a slightly kinder tone. However, I suppose this mad chase was not altogether wasted. It seems we have arrived in the city of art. Nier looked up. Stretched out before him was a row of impossibly tall sculptures. Their journey was at an end. They're huge, cried Nier, for completely forgetting the heat and pain of the past few hours. I've never seen anything so big. Each sculpture was formed from roughly the same shape. A tall rectangle that stretched up toward the sky. But that is where the similarities ended. Most were covered with panes of glass that reflected light in a thousand directions, while others seemed to be nothing but frames of steel. Some had tall spires on their tops, while others possessed triangular caps. What kind of city is this? said Nia. Where are the people? Where are the houses? Perhaps this land is intended exclusively for artistic use. The debate continued as they made their way through the city. Miracles of artistry were everywhere. Great iron crates with wheels sat silent on steel rails, 
beautifully carved works with lights of red, amber, and green that dangled over every street. As they moved away from the massive sculptures, they found a great array of smaller ones. Some were covered in glass or brick, but many were composed of, this, of materials they had never before encountered. The sheer variety of colors and styles were staggering. Unable to find a theme or purpose to the abstract works around them, Nier and Vice eventually fell silent. On the outskirts of the city, they discovered three sculptures in the shape of humans. Nier uttered a sigh of relief as he approached them. Finally, I was getting tired of modern art. But I'll this. The three statues were un indistinguishable except for a single word chiseled onto their right arms. One read Alpha, one read Beta, and the final one read Gamma. As Nier moved to touch the nearest statue, a bird flew from the top of one of the sculptures. Alighting on the statue's shoulder, it emitted a brief, beautiful song that took the form of words. Only one form is real, the others are false. Real form will always speak the truth, false ones will only speak lies. With that, the bird departed. As if on cue, the three statues shuddered to life, acquiring color and form as they began to breathe. Hey, look at that, said Nier. They're alive. The triplets bowed low before Nier. Please, said Alpha, you have to get me out of this nightmare. I am real. Stop lying, said Beta. He turned to Nier and threw his hands in the air. Alpha's a fake, you know. I'm the real one. What a load of crap, said Gamma. Beta is a fake. Everyone knows I'm the only real one around here. Their respective pleas given, the three statues returned to their frozen state as silence once again enveloped the city. When you consider all statements, only one of them could be the real thing, said Vice. Nier furrowed his brows and considered his answer. Only one form is real, the others are false. The real form will always speak the truth, the false ones will only speak lies. Now, I can't go back and review the text law. So, I'm going to have to make my best guess here. The one form is real, the others are false. The real form will always speak the truth. The false ones will only speak lies. I'm gonna do the test-taking strategy of always picking the middle answer and go with beta. The real one is Beta. Though Nier's voice betrayed a notable lack of confidence, he was relieved to see Vice sm nodding at him. I almost said smiling. If Alpha were telling the truth, began Vice in the dry tones of a lecturer, Beta and Gamma would be fakes. But in that case, Gamma's claim that Beta is fake would be the truth, and even though Gamma is a liar. Therefore, that theory crumbles. Now let us presume that Gamma spoke the truth. That makes Alpha and Beta liars. In this situation, however, Beta is calling Alpha a liar, which would leave us with two statues telling the truth. Finally, let us assume that Beta is telling the truth. If so, Alpha and Gamma's lies would make sense. Therefore, Beta must be real. As Vice finished his explanation, Alpha and Gamma crumbled soundlessly into dust, while Beta sprang to life once more. Congratulations, villager, said Vice in a cheerful voice. The time to awaken has arrived. Thank you for saving me, cried the villager. He dropped to his knees and bowed his head as low as it could go before an uncomfortable near pulled him to his feet. Why did you have a dream like this, said Vice. Have you been to this city before? The villager slowly looked around at the bizarre objects and sculptures that dotted the landscape and shook his head. Hey, I, I don't think so. I mean, it's impossible, right? There's no way I could have ever been to a place like this. But at the same time, I feel like I've seen it before. Deja vu, muttered Nier. Just like the mayor. Like they're going with Nair again. The vague sense of unease that struck Nier during the mayor's dream spread once more through his mind. <sighs> that was rough. I am positive I have seen that place before. Okay, that's enough. Don't need you getting all weird on me too. Okay, there. Now all the villagers can wake up, right? Yes, if the mayor's assumption was correct. I think I have had enough wordplay to last a lifetime. Thank you very much. You're telling me. Anyway, let's go see the mayor. So that was almost a solid 45 minutes of me reading. Uh, oh, how wonderful. Thank you so much. Here, I have something for you. Obtain the one-handed sword, Faith. Wow, this looks valuable. I can really have it? Of course. It's apparently a weapon of some renown. But we have little use for it. Well, we appreciate it. Thank you again. For everything. Who 
That took a little bit out of me. Uh, no faith. It's a katana. A very light one-handed sword, and I believe it's the last one-handed sword I have to collect in the game. So it makes, uh... I think Nameless Blade, Rebirth, and Faith are the only weapons, the only one-handed swords that you get no matter what in this game. The others are completely optional. You, you have to buy them from NPCs. So how was the village? Oh, it was truly magnificent. There are no words. Really. Huh. Neat. Let's get back to Popola. She'll probably want to know what's going on in there. Probably. Oh, Eve. Yeah, there were a lot of words going on. But, you know, it's a joke. Vice is a funny guy. And, oh my god. I think I actually worked up a little bit of a sweat because of the uh, lack of breathing I was doing. But I did want to get through that section in a timely manner. quite an intense workout, but it, it is it does put a little bit of strain, especially when you're someone that doesn't talk a lot. Or, or, I, not that I don't talk a lot, but I don't talk often. Especially for such a long period of time. You know, that's like doing an audiobook without taking a break. Like, I'm sure that those little sections could have been a chapter of a book easily without the whole, you know, choose your own adventure. Well, not choose your own adventure, but input the answer parts. I mean, that being said, I do like the Forest of Myth for being a departure. Uh, playing that casually, I'm sure someone would appreciate it. Or could appreciate Death it. Dream certainly is a strange illness. Yeah, it was something, all right. Even I, with my natural love for words, have no desire to visit that place ever again. You guys did well. You've been making a lot of long trips lately. Are you sure you're not pushing yourself too hard? I'm okay. I can't just sit around all day while Yona's sick, after all. If you say so. So, anything I can do for you? Well, I suppose there is one thing I could use a hand with. Have you heard about our plans to repair the canal? The work probably won't happen for a while. But once it's done, we can use the canal for trade and travel and all kinds of useful things. Unfortunately, however, we're a bit behind schedule at the moment. If you're willing to help out, I'd really appreciate it. No problem. What do you need? Great. So, the man I originally asked to help on this project hasn't shown up for work in a few days. I'm starting to get a little worried. So, maybe you can head over to Seafront and check up on him? I'll mark the location of his house on your map. He always carries a red bag over his shoulder. So he should be easy enough to find. Got it. And back to see when I go. As I was saying, the Forest of Myth is a neat little section. Um, when I say people could appreciate it, I'm sure there are people that'll just roll their eyes and be like, oh god, not a freaking, you know, novel. And buy this game to read. But I personally like it. A canal, is it? Fascinating. If we had a ferry, we could put these days of endlessly running about behind us. Don't you just float everywhere anyway? Do you think I am borne aloft by the winds, lad? It takes stamina to maintain this height. Oh, really? You could at least try to hide the utter dismay, you know. And it is part of what makes this game great. Because this game does a lot of, like, genre shifting. Uh, if you've seen previous streams or videos that I put out. Or have just played the game before. And you could be someone that's played the game before and you're like, yeah, I know. But you have, you know, your your side-scrolling sections, your shoot-em-up sections, uh, bullet hells are a regular thing. It's, uh, it's an RPG, an action RPG, first and foremost. And you got your little text adventure here. Whoops. So... This is, again, a really neat game. 
because of all of the parts that compose it. And the remake definitely makes it a more competent game than the original. It did a little bit of automata touch-ups. Um, hey, uh, are you the guy who's supposed to help repair the canal? Popola sent me to... Oh god, it's over. My life is over. Surely you must realize nothing good can come of being involved with this particular endeavor. Easy, Vice. Hey, so, are you alright? What happened? It's my wife. She left home a week ago and hasn't come back. I'm so worried I can't even focus on my work. Oh, my sweet dumpling, where are you? Oh, that's terrible. Would you like us to help you look for her? Really? You do that for me? Sure. Er, but do you have any idea where we should start? Hmm. Well, she always used to enjoy drinking at the tavern with her friends. All right, then I guess we'll start with them. Thank you. This means the world to me. Oh, and by the way, my wife always carries a red bag, just like mine. If you mention that, it might ring some bells. I've met some odd couples in my day, but none who felt the need to wander about flaunting matching luggage. <laughs> you need to get with the times. Coordinated outfits are all the rage. Plus, these bags are special. We bought them for our anniversary. But now my sweet dumpling is gone. <laughs> and it's all my fault. Oh, God. Okay, okay. Just stay calm. We'll go look for her, all right? I'm willing to bet that man knows more about his wife absconding than he's letting on. Vice isn't a people person. A people book. Hey there, I'm, a uh, looking for a woman carrying a red bag. Are you now? Interesting. Did something happen to her? She hasn't been home, and her husband's worried. Do you know anything about where she might be? <laughs> Trouble in paradise, is it? Oh, those two never change. Anyway, the short answer is no. She hasn't been around here, either. Though, come to think of it, she always got on well with the woman over at the tackle shop. Maybe you should try her? I'll do that. Thanks. Hey, what's the rush? You've got a cute face. Why not sit here and join me for a round? Or th uh, s sorry, ma'am, but I'm not old enough to drink. Ranger danger. Ranger danger. Hey there. Do you know a woman with a red bag by any chance? A red bag? Oh, sure. Although, now that I think about it, I haven't seen her in a while. The last time she came around, she mentioned something about leaving town. Leaving town, huh? All right, thanks for your time. If she has truly left this charming hamlet, finding her may prove most difficult indeed. I just hope she hasn't been attacked by shades or anything. Yeah, what's the likelihood of that happening? Uh, let me get back on my train of thought from before. Yeah, they touched up the game with a little bit of, uh... Lessons learned from Automata regarding the combat. There's not much that they could terribly do. Because, you know, it's... It's kind of already there. Oh, look, a shade. But, especially the... Something about that shade the seems flow rather... of the combat. Odd. Dane Red Bag. Hey! Look at this. It is identical to the red satchel carried by the man who sent us on this mad quest. Perhaps it belongs to his spouse. Oh no. Do you think the Shades got her? I fear it likely, lad. I sense no other activity in the immediate vicinity. We were too late. Well, this is terrible. What are we supposed to say? However difficult it may be, we've no choice but to tell the man the truth. Well, that was mercifully short for um, a mandatory quest thing. God damn it. Let's go. I swear I can drive this thing. Life's dead, give me a reward. I mean, it happens more often in RPGs than you'd think. In fact, if you had a nickel for every time that happened, 
probably have a couple nickels, at least. Anyway. Hey! Did you find my sweet dumpling? We didn't, but we got this off a of shade. Sorry, buddy. Oh, no. This... this is hers. So our fears were correct. Oh, God. How could this happen to her? <laughs> this is all my fault. Why is this all his fault? Ask the man or leave him be. Go off, buddy. If I may, my good man, why did your wife leave home in the first place? It's because... Because I... I think we should give him some time to himself, Vice. Hello, NPC. Honey, I'm home! Good heavens, you're a wreck! What's wrong? Dumpling! You're not dead! What in the world are you talking about? Oh, oh, you found my bag! Thank you so much! I can't believe I went and dropped it like that. Oh, this is such a relief! <laughs> okay, seriously. What's going on? Gotcha! She's not dead. Five minutes later. I see. So, he found a shade with my bag and assumed I'd been attacked and killed? I'm just glad you're safe, Dumpling. But I'm also so sorry. This is all my fault. Oh, if I didn't eat that apple you were saving. Oh, God, I'm such an idiot! Listen, I promise I'll never eat anything of yours again. You just promise never to run away from home again, okay? Run away? Have you lost your mind? I just went to visit my parents. Huh? I told you about this. Going to see my family, gone for a week. <laughs> Remember? Ugh, are you serious right now? Why don't you ever listen to me? Um... Lad, my brilliant intuition suggests we should beat a hasty retreat from these two with all speed. Stick around and listen. I can't believe you didn't listen to me. And you ate my apple. You are the absolute worst. What? Oh, like you're some perfect angel. You didn't even care enough about our anniversary to hang on to your bag. You, kid, I'm right about this, yeah? If anyone's wrong here, it's my wife, right? Wait, you're asking me? Who's in the wrong here? The wife who lost the bag or the husband who ate the apple? I mean... I, I kind of have to go with the husband. But the guy did you not. Shouldn't have eaten your wife's apple. That's not very nice. But I was hungry, and it was just sitting there. Look, I'm glad you went looking for my wife and all, but that was low, friend. Low. Uh oh, did I cross a line there? Besides, it's pretty rich to come after me for an apple when you threw away my entire stamp collection. Ha! You're damn right I did. And I'd do it again. You are nothing but a hoarding slob. You there. My husband's in the wrong here, isn't he? Uh, pardon. But madam, I... Honestly, both of them. Oh, enough. The both of you are at fault. Now apologize to one another and end this ridiculous display. Good talk for a floating magazine. I see you finally agree on something. I'm gonna say that the guy did not uh, roll a very high int stat. Intelligence is not his uh, specialty. Do you not even understand how frustrating this is, you colossal oaf? This is exactly what I hate about you. Fine, hate me. I'll still sleep like a baby knowing I'm not an unreasonable hag like you. Vice, what do I do? You turn on your heel and walk away as fast as your legs can carry you, my good lad. That's it. I have had enough. Instead of belittling me, why don't you get a proper job? Everyone in the neighborhood treats me like dirt, and it's all because of my unemployed slob of a husband. Uh, actually, I have a job now. Wait. You what? You're kidding. Why didn't you tell me? <laughs> That's great! Well, I sort of wanted it to be <laughs> a surprise. Oh, you big silly billy. Well, this calls for a celebration. Come on, I'm going to bake you a nice apple pie. They're perfect for each other. 
absolutely perfect. I have no idea what just transpired, but it has utterly exhausted me. Me too. Well, looks like they made up, so all's well that ends well? In the course of all that madness, I have forgotten why we even came here in the first place. Oh, heck, the canal! We need to ask him about the canal! Not you. I need... I can't thank you. Uh, sure. But listen, we need to talk to you about the canal. Oh, right! That's why you came here in the first place, huh? Well, now that my love life is rolling in clover again, I'd be more than happy to get going on the canal work. Ah, oh, that was easy. Heavens, that was exhausting. Tell me about it. Anyway, let's go give Popola an update. I'm... Pretty sure that that entire little bit there is new to this game, or this version of the game, because I do not remember it in Gestalt at all. <laughs> 